Welcome. My name is Damon Brown. This is Bring Your Worth TV. I come to you every Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Shout out to y'all over in uh, LinkedIn land, Link LinkedIners, whatever you want to call yourselves. <laughs> y'all that are watching on the original YouTube channel over at Bring Your Worth TV or youtube.com slash Brown Damon. Shout out to y'all that are watching on Amazon. I appreciate y'all. Some of y'all might not know, but Amazon actually has a live stream service as well. So you can check me out there. And if you're on Amazon, you'll see me live, which is amazing and bizarre and so much fun. I appreciate y'all coming through. And uh, everyone else is coming through on different platforms from Facebook, I'm sorry, Meta, to Twitter. I mean, X, so much change in the air. I'm happy to be a part of it. <laughs> I come to you every Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. My background is I help people become side hustlers, solopreneurs, or otherwise non-traditional entrepreneurs. I am one of you. I sold my last startup while being a stay-at-home dad with my little one. My little one ended up turning two around the time my startup was sold. So I respect and understand your journey. Let me help you out. Let me support you. Subscribe for free. This is episode 354. <laughs> so I've been coming to y'all a lot. Coming on the third anniversary in December, I cannot wait. I've loved rocking with y'all, particularly over this past month, which I'll get into. And my book coming out October 20th, the complete Bring Your Worth collection. It is the complete Bring Your Worth collection, going all the way back to 2016 with the original bestseller, The Bites Entrepreneur, all the way up to the latest independent book, Bring Your, I'm sorry, Build From Now. <laughs> yeah, Build From Now. And then Bring Your Worth and so many books in between. It's about six, seven books in here. A couple of them are bestsellers. Do not miss out on this. I really want to create a capstone so that you guys have this all in one place. If you're a completist like I am, and if you read my work, you know what a completist means. If you like to complete the set, <laughs> get all the infinity stones. If you're like me, this is the one you want to rock with. You can get signed copies from me over at DamonBrown.net. The links are below. You can also get it from your independent bookstores, even online over at bookshop.org, including the bookstore Books Are Magic. I believe they're going to be carrying it. Shout out to them. We'll talk about the shirt in a second. And lastly, of course, you can get it on Amazon. In fact, you can pre-order it on Amazon right now. Links below. This has been a fantastic final week. Usually I come to y'all every Wednesday and Sunday at, again, 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. This month was something totally different. As I showed you all in yesterday's live episode, I'll be going live every single week day, Monday through Friday. Your boy's been working. So it's been about 17, 18 episodes throughout this month of September. This today on Wednesday is the final episode, but also had a very special week this week. I break down why here and I share 40, I do mean 40 books that can transform your life. They definitely transform mine. And it's everything from Carl Jung to Brene Brown, uh, to Seth Godin, uh, to uh, Mark Kurlansky, to uh, Eric Schlosser. I can keep going, I can keep going. I can go through the whole list right now. In fact, <laughs> some of the books are still sitting here. <laughs> My poor desk. And so I've loved sharing all that with y'all. It's a really special episode for me. And thank y'all for that came through that celebrated with me. My favorite recent show, I talked about this yesterday, but this is still my favorite recent show as far as the lives, understanding artist contracts. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, but if you don't understand the business of the business, then you can't do your business. You can't be a bakery if you don't understand where your product comes from. You can't be an independent artist if you end up signing your rights away. Little details like that become the devil, as the saying says, as the devil is in the details. Literally me coming to you, even having this show, having, again, the um, complete Bring Your Worth collection coming out, all those things. These are IP intellectual properties that I own. That's all by design. It's, it's all Damon, and it's all under my family name. I talk about why and how you're able to do that, because if you're going to bust your behind to create something, why don't you own it? Something to think about. And as I've talked about during this marathon, a new shirt almost every day. This is one of my favorite shirts. I'm sure my, my family and kids are tired of me seeing it. 
Sorry, it's all mirrored up, so I can't see. Books are magic. Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to Brooklyn. Have not been to Brooklyn in a very long time, but a good friend of mine, I saw them on social media. They had this shirt. I was like, I need that. <laughs> Within a few months, I think it was during the holidays, one of my family members hooked me up with the shirt. Thank you. I wear the shirt all the time. Books are freaking magic. This is also a bookstore. I had um, I always get comments and, and questions about the shirt, like, like books are magic because people know I'm an author, or whatever. And I'm like, no, actually, it's a bookstore. <laughs> like, it's not. So they have two branches, both of them in, in Brooklyn. Um, one is on Smith Street. The other one, I forget the other street. But the shirts are available. I have not physically been there yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. I bought stuff from them, obviously, and I have friends that represent them. Um, if you want this shirt, and I have a ton of other shirts, you can actually order it online with the link link right here. It's not an affiliate link. I'm not connected to them, all that other stuff. It's just I love their freaking shirts, and I want to support independent bookstores. So do that. You need a new shirt, rock with that one. You can tell them Damon sent you, but I don't think they know who I am. All right. <laughs> today, <laughs> today, the final, final, final episode in this month long live stream every single weekday suddenly i sound like andrew dice clay publish your book independently step by step if you know my work if you've been a fan of the show for a while if you've been rocking me with me for a while if you've even bought my books you know how important this topic is i wanted to end on a strong note before we get back to our normal wednesday and sunday programming I'm going to break down the websites that I use, the links that I use, give as much game as possible that allowed me to set up my publishing uh, imprint, bring your worth, and self-publish. I think I'm at about 13, 14 books that I've self-published, a few of them bestsellers, as I mentioned. I want to give you the sauce. So I'm not going to mess around with this episode. We're going to go and get into it. There's about four or five questions I get all the time about people doing books. If you want to go ahead and do the traditional book route where you want to be with a penguin or a random house, actually, they're the same now, but that's how far back I go. But a penguin or a random house or a, a knob or whatever, whatever, then this will help you. But a lot of the energy of this episode is about how to publish it independently, to do it outside of the traditional publishing system where you need an agent. Shout out to the agents that I've worked with and that I currently work with. There's nothing wrong with agents. And there's nothing wrong with the traditional publishers. But the focus of this is on doing it independently as I have. And as Prince said, and other people have said, if you do it independently, there's more risk, but you also get a lion's share of the profit. So let's get started with the first question. If you have any questions as far as going independent, throw them in the chat. Otherwise, we've got a lot of questions in here already. All right. <clears throat> so the first question is... How do I know if I should publish a book? This is a really, really uh, common question. Don't feel bad if you have an idea and you're not sure if it's quote unquote good or not. Most ideas are good. I'll put it out there. Good as in definition of there's probably someone that wants to read it. If you want to read it out of the, I think it's 8 billion people in the world, chances are there's one other person who's going to read it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to access that person or those people. <laughs> Whole other discussion that's called having a platform and actually being able to reach the people that you say the book is for. My whole point is that there's probably a story that you have to tell that only you know. <clears throat> my late grandmother, who is a you see in the picture right above my head, quite literally, she's above me. Shout out to her. She had so many adventures when she was living in the country and she was uh, uh, raised on the outskirts of Pittsburgh, which is extremely rural, particularly at that time. And of course, I'm originally from South Jersey. So she migrated to New Jersey, Camden, shout out to Camden, when I wasn't even born yet. And I don't think my mom was even born yet when she came over to Camden. Amazing stories. That might be the story to tell. She told us those stories eventually when she got older. But that's a story to tell, like just the adventures of being a very young African-American woman moving to the big city after being in rural Pennsylvania. That sounds like an adventure to me. I listened to it when I was my kid's age, <laughs> when I was much younger, listening to these stories that I heard over time, and they sound like adventures to me. You might have that particular story. 
or you might be coming from a standpoint of more my energy where you have a particular skill set that you want to share in a book, more instructive. I've done two startups and I sold the second one. Most people do not sell their startups. So I have a unique viewpoint that I can say, this is a skill set. One of the reasons why I have the TV show. So from all the people that I've talked to, <clears throat> when you usually are going to write a book, it's about telling a unique story, often your own, or you're being instructive and helping guide people on their particular way. The real question is, does your particular idea for a book merit 50,000 words? That's really what it comes down to. It's not if your book is worthwhile or not. Is, is it, does it merit 50,000 words minimum? In fact, some of my books are actually about 30 or 40,000 words. But that's a lot of words. I was just talking to a client about it recently where when you have a particular idea, particularly if you're planning on writing, the question doesn't become if it's a good idea or not. Because you, you can kind of figure that out if someone's interested in it or if you're really interested in it and you need to get it out. The question becomes, is it an article? As in something that's a few hundred words to a few thousand words? Is it a magazine article, which tends to be a lot longer, like 5,000 words? Or is it a book, which takes a couple years to write usually and get out, and it's 50,000 words? Some ideas work, in this case, well as a bring your word show. And other books, other ideas work really well as a book. <laughs> Some of these things cannot be captured in a 45-minute episode or even a two-hour episode. It requires that time to simmer. So <clears throat> if you want to know if your idea is worthwhile, you really have to ask yourself, does it merit all that time and effort to get it into book form? That's really the big question, particularly if you're not a professional writer. 50,000 words, even for pros like myself, takes a while. So sometimes it's like, you know what? This actually will work really well as an essay. Some things actually work really well as a social media post. These big ideas I've had, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's a tweet. <laughs> that's 240 characters. I'm just going to put it out. And it works fine. And other things, I'm like, no, this book will come out next year. And then I plan based on that. Let me know if you're trying to work through if you feel like your idea is worth pursuing or what blocks you might be having, feel free to throw those comments, those, those questions, those questions in the comments. I'm like Dr. Seuss today, everything's backwards. All right. <laughs> All right. Again, you're watching the Bring Aware Show <laughs> coming to you every month, every Wednesday, I don't even know the day, Wednesday and Sunday at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. I'm your host, Damon Brown, host, uh, proprietor, founder, and all those good things. All right, let's get to the meat of it. If you're going to publish a book independently, what are the ways to publish? There are three ways to publish. It's really that simple. Three ways, not complicated. The first way is called the traditional publishing system. The second way is called the hybrid publishing system. And the third way is called the self-publishing or independent publishing system. The traditional system is what you see the big headlines about. Um, Prince Harry got, I don't know, $10 million dollars to do his autobiography. Those are the ones that get the headlines. That sure enough is not independently published. That means that Prince Harry or yourself, if you're gonna go in that route, believe it or not, you guys are on the same page. <laughs> you got a good book idea, someone will pay you for it. That means that you go to a traditional publisher through what's called an agent. An agent is someone who represents you just like in Hollywood and other places. The agent usually does not ask for anything. If an agent is charging you for something, that's usually a bad sign. But a book agent will say, hey, I will represent you. That's the term. But once, once you sell that book and any copies of that book, I'm taking 15% off of it. So whatever royalties you get from that book, eventually, the agent's going to take at least 15%. If they're working with other agents, it could be as high as 20%. If it's higher than that, then I would question things. Industry standard is 15%. But for that 15%, the agent for free will trot you around to the different publishing agent, publishing uh, um, organizations, publishers. That's the word I'm looking for. Publishers, publishing organizations, publishers in New York, in SF, in LA. Those are the main hubs, particularly, obviously, New York, if you know the publishing industry. And then they will say, hey, you've got a really good idea here. He, he or she's a new author. You should, you should, you should rock with them. Let's do this. <clears throat> They offer a deal. The deal 
comes often comes with an advance. Advance, as we talked about in the previous episode about artist contracts, again, the links are below, or just scroll back in the chat five minutes ago. Then based on that, they will give you an advance to advance a certain set amount of money to make sure that you can eat and take care of things while you complete the book. The book finally comes out. You pay them back the advance based on the royalty setup that you have based on per book sold. That's the traditional publishing industry. Lots of intricacies to it, but that's the basic idea. When you come to hybrid, that's the second version, that's when you actually pay someone to print the books for you, promote them, get them out there. They might even get you some um, um, media looks. So they might reach out to certain podcasts for you, depending on the package you buy. Again, so you might, you might say, I really want to publish this book, but I don't want to try to find a printer. I don't want to find an editor. I don't want, I want the cover design. I just want to write the book and then have it get shipped out and make sure it's in bookstores. Organizations like one I'll suggest to you right now are called hybrid, where they'll go ahead and say, yes, give me $5,000, $10,000, whatever the case may be. You buy this package and then we'll do the rest, just write the book. And in fact, we'll get an editor for you who will help you get through the book if you're a first time editor or first time writer, or if you've never written something before on that magnitude. That's an example of that. <clears throat> the last example is independent. Independent means you're actually writing the book and then I highly suggest you get an editor as well as a cover designer to go ahead and make sure that your book is up to standard. You might even get a ghostwriter or a writing coach. I also do both of those to help you get to that next level. And then you find those avenues to get it published. I'll go over some of those details. That's what I mean by independent publishing. Those are the different, different types of methods. So again, from the top, traditional publishing, which is what everybody knows about, hybrid, which is when you pay a service and all you do is write the book and they do the rest. And then lastly, it's independent where, frankly, you end up putting up money to make sure it gets done. But once the book starts selling, you actually get, as I said, the lion's share or the bulk of whatever the cover price is, as opposed to the other instances. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want to learn more about the different types of publishing methods and how to structure things, I highly recommend the book, How to Write a Book Proposal by Michael Larson. But Michael, ages ago, back when I was a wee lad, <laughs> just getting to the publishing industry. And uh, we had, had our back and forth as far as understanding things and me trying to trying to get things published and all those things. And then as I matured over the years, I really respected his guidance and his insight. He's been in the game for a long time. He actually is based in San Francisco. And I think his wife, Elizabeth, rest in peace, she had passed away. But he used to, used to have these beautiful parties in, in uh, their homes over in San Francisco when I lived there. And I caught the tail end of that era. <laughs> but it was the both gracious people, fantastic. This was the first book that actually set me on fire, where I was like, oh, I can do this. Now, it's called how to, how to Write a Book Proposal. And you think, well, I need a book proposal, which you may or might, 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 may or might not know. You need a book proposal to actually talk to, again, that first option, the traditional publishers. If you're not going the traditional route, and you're going hybrid, where you're just paying someone and they're getting the package out for you. And lastly, if you're going independent, this is still a fantastic book to break down the structure as far as how you're going to get it out there, how you're going to market your book, and things of that nature. You still need to be involved, even if you're with a traditional publisher, in figuring out where your audience is. So highly recommend that book. It's one of my favorites. It stays on my shelf. I think I, I was reading it with a client, so I think that's why it's somewhere over here. But it's usually right behind me on my shelf. In fact, if you can find it on the shelf, I'll give you a cookie. All right. <laughs> If you're more curious about more curious about um, about the hybrid setup, then this is an option too. This publisher is called Greenleaf Book Group. I met them ages ago. In fact, let me put them on the stage here. There we go. I met them ages ago at the American Society of Journalists and Authors conference. Shout out to them and Tanya, who is the the founder, I believe. If not the founder, she's a CEO. Shout out to her as well. So they are. Super reputable. They have different packages. There's not an endorsement. I don't get kickbacks or anything from them. It's just I remember meeting them ages ago, ages ago. I might not even, I think I just started publishing books, 
my 27th book is about to come out. That's how long I've known these guys. But I've heard so many good things about them. And they're actually one of the first hybrid publishers that I learned about. And even some people, well, stats speak for themselves. So I think they're really, really, um, one. definitely at minimum, they're one of the leaders when it comes to hybrid publishing. Check out their website if you're considering it. Because to be honest, if you're going to go independent, there's a lot of heavy lifting. If you're going to go the traditional route, there's also heavy lifting because you need to do the book proposal, you need to get an agent, and you need to, of course, get the buy-in from these major publishers who get pitches, dozens of pitches, if not hundreds, every single day. Not exaggerating. So if those two routes between hot and cold feel a little bit extreme, hybrid is also an option, too. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's gotten a bad rap in the past. But so did self-publishing and, you know, that's helping me feed my family. So it's a different world here. Definitely embrace it. All right. So those are the three ways that <clears throat> that you can get your, your book out there. No matter what you're doing with your book. And this actually I would flip it back to um, to my man, um, Michael Larson's book. If you're looking at different ways to publish and where your book might fit. There's, there's one simple way to do it, and that is to get a sheet of paper and to write down whatever your book idea is and where you want it to go. What are the um, com competing books and what are the complementary books? The competing books or competitive books and the complementary books. The, com the um, competitive books are the books that are your direct competition. In other words, if they're at a bookstore and they're like, Okay, I'm either going to get Damon's book or I'm going to get Angie's book over here, but I'm not going to get both of them because they're too similar. That's what a competitive book means. In my case, it might be my book, Career Remix, and then see if the homies book is over here. Ah, there it is. And then my friend, um, Jenny Blake's book, Pivot. They're very similar. We did not know each other at the time. <laughs> when we finally linked up, we got along really well. That's probably why is because we made really similar books. Career Remix actually came out a little bit later, but it was still the intention of the stuff I did in The Bites as Entrepreneur, which is around the time that Jenny and I met. These would be competitive books. They're similar, very similar things. How do you pivot your career? How do you pivot your career? You can compare that to a complimentary book, which would be by another friend of mine. I swear I love hyping up my friends, but they are excellent authors. So <laughs> not going to not going to be pushing BS on this show. And then my homie Nilla for Merchant, The Power of Onlyness. That actually matches fairly well with Career Remix or even my upcoming project, The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection. These are complimentary. So if someone bought this, they were like, oh, I should probably get Damon's book, too. It's a similar energy. They get my book. Oh, I should probably get Nilla for's book. Once you determine those that then it'll help you strategize. Does your book make sense to get out there or is it so too similar to these other competing books? Is there an agent that represents those competing or complementary books? And maybe you can talk to them and say, hey, I got a book that I want to do that's similar. And you already represent Jenny Blake. You already represent Nilla for Merchant. Maybe you can represent me too. That kind of, those kind of discussions. It really gives a good strategic perspective on what's happening there. And so, you got to look at it strategically and not just say, I want to write a book. Now, if you do want to write a book, that's cool. But if you want to actually have a book that moves numbers, that you want to partially make a living from, that you want on the bestseller list, that you want to do speaking engagements and things of that nature, then that does require that higher level of strategy. All right. When it comes to writing, we got to talk about it. Writing, it can be complicated. <laughs> And when it comes to writing, sorry, my stuff's running slow here. When it comes to writing, then it's really important to, to understand why you're writing, the point of what you're writing for, and who you're writing for. What I recommend to a lot of people, including some current coaching clients you might be even watching right now, is to begin with something very small. So there's something called a vignette. It's very French where it's basically a scene. Well, what's a scene? A scene might be you're walking into a room and you're talking with your parents and your book might be about being a child. 
So you write out that scene and it might be a hundred words, might be 500 words. Once you write out that scene, you start to get a flavor of the, the, the setting and who you're speaking to and the voice. You might hear writers talking about the voice a lot, not the TV show, but like the writer voice, the voice of the narrator. If you read any of my books, each of those books has a voice. There's certain language. Um, is there slang being used? Is there cursing involved? Um, is it uh, from a, a grad school level or is it more from a newspaper sixth, seventh, eighth grade level? What's the energy of the words? How is the pacing? Are there a lot of quotes? All those things are the voice. Once you do a vignette or something small, even if you want to publish a blog post or if you're like me and you want to go ahead and publish your work as like a journalist, you know, doing a, a small essay, that's a great place to start. Some of my best sellers, including Bites as Entrepreneur, began as like columns. I have a column with Ink Magazine. A lot of those ideas originated. And it was almost like a workshop when I was doing the column with Ink. So you'll see some of that history. If you go to ink.com slash author slash Brown Damon, and you see the history of, there's like 600 columns. So you don't have to go through all of them. But if you check out the history there, you'll see some of the origins of the different things that I'm working on. And that's how you can start writing just by starting small. You don't say, I'm going to write a 50,000 word book and then just start writing 50,000 words. What I would recommend is starting with something that's 500 words, even something that's 50 words that breaks it down. Oh, looks like I got a tech issue. I'll be right back in a second. I need to work on my Jeopardy, my Jeopardy music. Hold on one second. <laughs> I would start singing, but uh, as I threaten people, they people do not want me at karaoke, so <laughs> I will skip the singing. There we go. Now we're back in business. The last live episode of the stream, and it, my tech is like, yo, you've been using us every single day. We're going to shut down now. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Now, I'm a professional writer. I got two journalism degrees under my belt. So my perspective is a little bit different because I've been writing literally my whole life. If you're new to writing, though, there are excellent books that will help you on your way. I got my master's in magazine publishing. There's so many writing books that were given to me <laughs> and required. These three or four I'm going to recommend are the cream, creme de la creme. We're going all French today. Creme de la creme. If you're like, Damon, I couldn't write my way out of a paper bag the same way that I talk about. <laughs> I can barely draw. This is one of those things. First recommendation, Bird by Bird. Anne Lamott, classic. I saw her speak at TED um, probably about six, seven years ago. Um, but this book, I think it's the 25th anniversary. That tells you how far back this book goes. This book was well before I was even in grad school. So that was a while ago. Fantastic book. It talks about the act of writing and the, the um, analogy here when they talk about bird by bird. I might get the story a little bit off, but I think you'll get the point is that her little brother waited till the last minute to do a uh, biology project where he had to map out all the different birds, I believe, in this neighborhood or in a certain area. And it was the last night. I've been there before <laughs> where you procrastinate and suddenly you have to do an all nighter. And he was, he was having a hard time. And I believe it was her dad had said, just go bird by bird. It becomes this beautiful metaphor, not even analogy, this beautiful metaphor of saying, if you're going to write a 50,000 word manuscript, you call it a manuscript before it becomes a book. If you're going to write a 50,000 word manuscript, then you use, you can't just write 50,000 words. You start with one word and then it becomes two and then it becomes a sentence and then it becomes a paragraph and then it becomes a page, et cetera, et cetera. It becomes a scene, becomes a chapter. And then before you, you know, you have chapter done and then you have a handful of chapters and then, wow, you have a whole section done. You have a whole part done. You might even have a whole book done. That's what Bird by Bird is about. Highly recommended. Good stuff. Good stuff. Classic, classic, classic. Next classic, The War of Art. Shout out to Stephen Pressfield. I love you. I love your work. I've had a chance to connect with him over the years. He even endorsed the new book, The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection. So thank you wherever I put the book. 
I was I was humbled to even ask and connect with him to send a copy of the book. But he's he's considered a mammoth within our sphere. So thank you, Steve, for everything. Fantastic book. This is what, for me, put his name on the map. It is a tiny book. I was also actively reading it. I'm not sure where it is, but it's super, super small. Maybe like 150 words. That might give some hope if you're intimidated by writing all these, all these things. But it's a fantastic book. What it talks about is us finding the motivation to complete the thing that we know we're meant to complete. Sound familiar? That's my energy with Bring Your Worth, the book, as well as the show. That's my energy with Bites as Entrepreneur. That's my energy with Built From Now and all the books that are in the complete Bring Your Worth collection. He wants to get you motivated to get to where you need to be. What I love about this book is that he also talks about his own journey and how it took him many, many years because he, he knew he was a creative. He knew he had a particular story to tell. And he was bobbing and weaving, as you say, and he was avoiding everything, but putting his behind down, behind the typewriter and typing. And once he did, this is his first major book and he knocked it out of the park. I want to say this book is about 30 years old now. And um, if you speak to a lot of writers, particularly professional writers, they know this book. They love this book. It's dog-eared. And it's usually floating somewhere around their office. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> Probably my favorite recommendation for getting motivation as you start your writing journey. Last, uh, one of the last book recommendations would be uh, The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. This is a classic. If you know, if you have any background with journalism or editing, this is on your desk all the time. It gives simple ways to make your writing clean. And good writing is clean. There's exceptions like Shout out to Tom Wolf and other folks who do these sentences that are literally a page long. I've attempted some of them. Sorry, some of y'all that have been subjected to them. But the best writing is often clean and simple. This tells you how to untangle your writing and make it a lot clearer. That's all I have to say about that. It's a fantastic book. Um, one bonus book, which I forgot to mention in the earlier segment, is <clears throat> excuse me, How to Be Your Own Literary Agent by Richard Curtis. Shout out to Richard Curtis. He's fantastic. He is a former agent. And he talks about how you can represent your own book. Make sure y'all can see it. Those bars are huge. <laughs> Make sure y'all can see it. Fantastic book. Also brown, dog-eared. And I learned a lot. I've actually represented some of my own books with the big publishers. And one of the reasons why some of those turned out well and still give me royalties to this day was the advice that Richard gave. So fantastic on him. Hope he's doing wonderful. Oh, and I did have Struck and White. This copy is from grad school. I'm not going to tell you how old this copy is. Like, like I told you, it's small. It's simple. It's concise. It's elements of style required for every good writer, I believe. All right. So if y'all that are professional writers like myself or y'all that are trying to figure out how you're writing and are just starting, what are your favorite tips as far as how to start writing? Throw, throw them in the comments. I'd love to hear some of your other perspectives. Again, my bias is strong because I've always been in journalism, but I love to hear the fiction take and all these different perspectives that, frankly, I don't have. So I'd love to hear it. Throw something in the comments if you're involved in the writing community. I love to hear your takes. All right. Now we're getting to, now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're getting to the good stuff. How do I make a book? This physical product, it comes from here, it goes on a notepad, and suddenly it turns into this. How does that happen? I talked about the different methods. You have the traditional publishing, where you get an agent. The agent um, shops your work, which is what they call it. And the traditional publishing houses, most of them in New York, they give you an advance, they give you a deal, and the book comes out two to three years later. Then we have the hybrid method, as I talked about with Greenleaf Book Group and other folks who you would pay them X amount of dollars, they say, hey, we'll hook you up with the editor. We might even get you a ghostwriter. We'll do everything for you, but you pay them a certain amount of money. And then it's like the traditional publishing system after that. Today, the focus is on the third way, the way that I've taken for the last 10 or so years of my book career, which is doing it independently. If you're gonna be doing it independently, as I hinted at earlier, 
there's two magic things you need. You need a cover designer and you need an editor. It's like the whole old lawyer saying, a lawyer that represents him or herself has a fool for a client. If you're gonna be going on your own, there's gonna be no checks and balances, Amazon or whatever, they're not gonna be here to help you. If you publish your book and there's 200 errors in it and misspellings and it's not factually correct, they're gonna be like, cool, it costs $20. If you guys want to buy it, you can buy it. Oh, you bought one? All right, cool. And then the, off, and then the, the, the writers or the readers are going to be coming after you, which I've done errors in my book. You do not want that. <laughs> There's self, I'm still living down from the first edition of books I did years ago. I swear. And they keep coming up in the reviews, and I'm like, man, I made a mistake. But that's the risk that you make when you go independent. So you're going to need a cover designer. This cover designed by... My good friend, Beck Loss, shout out to Beck. If you want to get connected with Beck and you like the covers that she's designed for me, drop me a line, drop something in the comments, email me, come to DaveBrown.net and message me, whatever. I'm happy to connect you with Beck. Love her work. She did this book cover. And then you also need an independent, independent editor. My independent editor for all my books has been Jeanette Hurt. Shout out to Jeanette. Her name might sound familiar because... We did a book a handful of years ago. I told you all 40 books are still on my desk from the other episode a couple of days ago. <laughs> you know what I'm going to be doing after this live stream is over. All right. The, our book, The Passive Writer, might look familiar. Me and Jeanette on the cover. She's an awesome editor. If you want to connect with Jeanette, you can actually go, could go to JeanetteHurt.com. Hurt, like hurt yourself. JeanetteHurt.com. Or DM me or message me. I'm happy to connect you with Jeanette. Jeanette, fantastic editor. Thank you, both of you, for doing all that fantastic work. I've worked with them. So essentially, I've assembled a team to make sure I get what I need to make sure that the book is where it needs to be. Because you're independent. If you're going to be doing independent stuff, you got to make sure that your stuff is straight. You got to make sure that your, uh, your cover design is good. You got to make sure that your editor is good. When it comes to actually doing the book and making the book, you have a few different options. You can go to a local printer and some of my relatives, including my dad, who self-published books back in the day, that was the main choice that they had. So you might have um, the same printer that you would go to, even going to like a Staples or a Kinko's now, like a Kinko's, look at their Kinko's FedEx. They can publish your book too. If you just want a bunch of copies printed, that's going to be more expensive up front, but you can do what you like and print literally as many copies as you want. In that case, it's not going to be necessarily in the publishing system. It's going to be something that you print. Another option is to actually go print on demand. Print on demand means that you set up something usually through an online shop, and I'll give some other options here, online shop. And then whenever someone asks for the book, they will literally print it on demand and then ship the book to them. That's called fulfillment. Sometimes they do the fulfillment. Sometimes they do not but they will print the book on demand. If you want extra copies, they'll also do print on demand. A lot of the books that I do with my imprint are print on demand because it's way more feasible. Usually don't have to do imprint um, upfront money with it. And then literally you print as you go. What's nice is that print on demand used to really suck going 10, 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, around the time I first started getting into publishing. Now with technology and all those things, they've improved so much. It's definitely worth something worth checking out. So again, you have those options of doing the local printer and you also have the options of doing the, <clears throat> excuse me, of doing the, the print on demand. Um, and then if you're going to take your own particular route on it, that means all those little business details need to be fulfilled by you. There's, there's not, again, you need to get your own editor, get your own cover designer, but also means you need to get the details together to make sure that your stuff is tight. So your first stop, First stop, as far as making a book, you're like, Damon, I love my book idea. I got a cover designer. I got an editor who I haven't paid them yet, but they're willing to work on it with me. And I think my writing is going to be good, but I want to get it out. The first thing you want to do is get over to Bowker's. And let me make sure that you guys can see. There it is. Still working. Again, keep an eye on the technology today. Because acting a little funky. All right. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see it. Give a shout in the chat if you have any issues. 
This is Bowker's. It's B O W K E R dot com. This is Bowker Identifier Services. Let's get scientific with it here. This thing right here at the very top, this is called an ISBN. I forget what it stands for, but it's on the Bowker's website. <laughs> International something. But it's a book number, probably the BN, that identifies each book. Literally every book. You can consider it, if you're here in America, it's like a social security number for your book. It, only one exists. This only exists for Jeanette and I's book, The Passive Writer. Nobody else can use this. Until the end of the time, this will be our number. This is ISBN. It's usually either 10 numbers or 13 numbers, but it's pretty interchangeable. Usually you end up getting both. If you end up going to a printer, uh, like a print on demand service, like Amazon, which I'll get into in a second, or one of those, they're going to ask you, do you have your own ISBN? If you say no, they will give you an ISBN, but the ISBN will be under their company, not yours. In other words, it's the equivalent of you having a kid and then them being like, what did you want to get a social security number or did you want to just get the hospital a social security number? And it's like, I'll just get a social security number from the hospital. Well, that could, that sounds complicated to me. So that's not really yours. That's not part of your family. It's actually owned by the hospital. For this book, this book is under my name because it's under my publishing company, which is Bring Your Worth Publishing under Damon Brown. That's because I own the ISPN number. And then Jeanette and I share the ownership because we're co-authors. That's what you do. ISBN numbers are super important because if you end up going to one of these print-on-demand services, or again, even Amazon, which I'll show in a second, and you go and say, I don't have an ISBN. Why don't you give me yours? I'll get it for free. It's not really free because they technically own the um, Library of Congress, if you want to get fancy with it, rights to that particular book. There's older books that I did where I didn't know that. And I had to go back to second editions and figure it out to make sure it was under my family name. This is where you get the ISBN number. This is where you get it. And then if you look up this ISBN right now at the Library of Congress, they have a website. It'll say Damon Brown under there. This is where it begins. If you're going to go do the independent route, get your ISBNs. This will be probably the most expensive thing that you will buy next to perhaps a really good editor, but it's so worthwhile. So let's go through this real quick. Uh, Bowkers.com are the people that organize ISBNs, at least here in America. There might be some other stuff overseas, but it's legal overseas as well. This is their identifier services. You can buy your ISBNs here. And then give a shout if you have any issues with reading the text on there. So here's the tricky part. Right here, I don't think you can see my mouse, but you see the, the beige area where it has 10 ISBNs and the gray area at the bottom where it says one ISBN, all the way on the right-hand side. This is key. I've had conversations about authors who have lamented about this. We've joked about it. This is one of those things that you want to pay attention to. You can buy one ISBN for $125. Sounds expensive, but again, you're making sure that you own your intellectual property, right? Or you can buy 10 ISBNs for $295. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's $300 in this economy. I know it's a lot of money. And you're like, I only want to do one book, Damon. I'm going to do the one ISBN. Or do you? What I found with the hundreds of people that I've coached, helping them get their books out, they'll be public speakers who are considering doing a book. People who are new to books, I've found this time and time again. Many of us do not get a book out. But if we do get a book out, chances are we're going to be doing more than one. My one of, one of my first books, I thought it was going to be one and done. I'm like Jay-Z. It's like, I'm going to do Reasonable Doubt, and then I'm going to ride off in the sunset. I'm going to do Illmatic, shout out to Nas, and I'm going to go, no, no. Here I am, 20, 27 books in, 27 next month. I would highly recommend, if you plan on doing any kind of writing, to just get the 10. I bought 10 probably three, four years ago, and I was watching my money too, and I'm still using those ISBNs. And like I said, I've done several books. I'm still not out of ISBN numbers. Otherwise, 
if it's 10 ISBNs, I'd have to buy a la carte. You're talking $125. Once you set up the ISBNs, and they have a little video here, I will not play it. But once you set up, set up the ISBNs, yeah, I don't think you're going to need 100. So you probably let that one go. If I do all these books and you don't need a, and I don't need 100, you're probably good. But once you set that up, and, and you can click on the website, the links are below, and I won't go through the whole thing. Once you set that up, though, then you can go ahead and put in the details. You can put in the ownership. You can say um, the um, the authors. You can even put the cover designer. Again, my cover designer is Beck Loss. Like all that, we call it metadata. All that metadata can go in there. That metadata actually goes to the Library of Congress. And it also makes it easier for bookstores, when they have your book, to know where your book belongs. My book works under um, self-help. My book works under um, entrepreneurship, obviously, you know, with the, with the work that I do. It works under um, small business and coaching. All those categories are listed under the ISBN. So it's not just you owning the intellectual property to the books that you create. It's also a matter of you categorizing things so your books end up literally at the right place. I remember making a mistake with my metadata and my book ended up being somewhere else in the bookstore where I didn't want it to be. So this is all tied together. Key part of it, get your ISBN together. Once you get your ISBN together, then you have plenty of options. So one, sorry, again, back to the tech stuff. All right. So the first stop that you should make if you're going independent is Ingram Spark. Again, give a shout out in the comments if you can't see that. There we go. Ingram Spark. Ingram and Bowkers are kind of like the, the twins of the American, and I would even argue to a certain extent, the international publishing system. Well, Bowker, Bowkers, suddenly New Jersey accents coming out. Bowkers, there we go. Bowkers is focused on the ISBNs and getting the numbers together. Ingram is often, often set up with the printing and the distribution. Ingram Spark is your opportunity to actually publish a book and then actually get it, get it um, to the bookstores. And so there's pricing with it, but, but just recently, like I said, within the last two months, they went completely free. So if you want to get a book on there, you would go ahead and design your book. That's where the cover designer and all those things would help. You follow their particular format. You say how long the book is going to be. You set up when the book is going to be released. And then once you set that up, then you upload those files. It's just like doing a website. You upload those files. They go and check the files. And they're like, hey, you're good to go. Your book will come out in X amount of days. When it comes to releasing your book, quick sidebar, the rule is three to six months in advance, you want to let people know. I let y'all know about the complete Bring Your Worth collection at the top of the summer, and the book is going to come out in, around Halloween here in America. So I let y'all know about four months in advance. A few things happen with that. First of all, it gives the bookstores enough time to get a copy of your book to actually have it on the shelves because they need to ship it. The second thing that it does is that it gives the media enough time. So there's podcasts I'm going to be on. There's people that have had an early copy of the book. There's interviews and discussions I've been having with people behind the scenes since I announced the book. I think I announced the book like in June. So when the book comes out October 20th, there's at least a few things set up so that people know about the book. There's always going to be, there might be reviews of the book, those kinds of details. So you want to, as soon as you know that your book is in really good shape, then you want to think about where you want it to come out three to six months from now, at least, maybe even longer if you're a new author, because that'll give you enough time to promote your book, to get the book to uh, the people that you might really be interested in, to get blurbs for the book. Again, I was lucky enough to get a blurb from uh, Stephen Pressfield for my latest book. That took time. I had to talk to him ahead of time. He had to say, yeah, let's talk about it. I had to send him a copy of the book. And then he's like, yeah, I'll say this about the book. That exchange took a minute. Not a long time, but it took a minute. You don't want to do that at the last minute. Ingram Sparks should be your first stop. What's important with Ingram Sparks, this is a key point here, is that as you do it through Ingram Sparks, you can actually set up where you want it to go. 
including on Amazon. So when I did uh, the complete Bring Your Worth collection, within about two to three weeks, it automatically appeared on Amazon with the pricing, with the setup, with the launch, again, back to the metadata. You want this to be your first stop. If your first stop is Amazon, then that means that book might only be on Amazon. And guess what? Amazon doesn't have bookstores. So if you want your book to physically be in bookstores, start with Ingram Spark. Um, there's other options, but this is absolutely my favorite. They're a little rough in the past, and there are other choices such as Create Space. But this one, though, is a joint that I would highly recommend you go with. Um, I do not have any special links or <laughs> any deals, but it's really affordable. And then they end up taking the money for when you print. Again, this is a print on demand op option. And so that means someone asks for the books, someone buys it on Amazon, someone pre orders it. When that money comes through, you get your cut of it. And if you're doing a traditional publishing deal, again, with the big guys in New York, then you're looking at you may be getting maybe five, six percent of the cover price. So if it's a $10 book, you're getting 50 cents per book. If you're doing the independent route, like with Ingram Spark, and you have a $10 book, then you might be getting, say, 30% of the cover price or $3 per book. So you might not have the recognition or the media heft or the promotion that you would have at a traditional book publisher, which that's up for debate. That'll be another episode. <laughs> But if you do it independently, you can, again, get the lion's share of the money coming through there. Ingram Spark, I found, is the best route if you're going to go independent. All right. So once you do Ingram Spark, then your last stop, your very last stop, is Mr. Bezos. And that's at KDP slash Amazon. I'm sorry, KDP.Amazon.com. Happen to be in the U.S., but it'll set you up no matter what area you're in. I sell books in Brazil and Japan. Shout out to my folks in India. I sell books all over the place. So Amazon set up in that way. Do not think it's just an American company. KDP is the platform. People sometimes get confused because they think KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, is just about the Kindle. It's actually not true. You can actually have the physical stuff on there too. KDP is a way for you to have digital versions of your physical books. And often they'll go ahead and take the same files or very similar files to what you uploaded to say Ingram Spark on Kindle. You also can connect your physical book to your Kindle book here on KDP and have them both show up in the same area. That's really important. The Kindle version of the complete Bring Your Worth collection will be out soon. But as soon as I go ahead and upload that, then it's going to be on that exact same page, excuse me, the exact same page that you would find um, the, um, the physical copy. So they'd be, be paired together. Amazon, whether you love them or hate them, are still the leading publishing platform where people get their books. It's just a fact. I want to say 60 to 70% still. Bookshop.org, I shouted them out at the beginning. I love them. My bookshop. Uh, my bookshop at bookshop.org is in the link below. You can get all my books there. I love to support them. And also, from a market standpoint, Amazon is still running things. So if you want to make sure your book gets as much exposure as, po as po possible, you want to do the Amazon route as well. Going back to go doing Ingram Spark, Ingram Spark, depending on which, what buttons you click, and it's all right there. It's fairly straightforward, that part at least. It will automatically show up at, on goodreads.com. It'll automatically show up at bookshop.org. It'll show, show up at barnesandnoble.com. Shout out to Barnes & Noble. I've been an um, author with them for a couple of years, quite a few years. And so it'll automatically show up there. You don't have to worry about that. Amazon, though, has its own ecosystem. Be sure and check out the KDP program if you want to have a digital version of your book and or if you do a digital version of your book and you know, make sure that it's tied to the physical version of your book that you've already done. Key parts of it, key parts of it. The last, last, last point, and thank you for hanging with me on this, on this, this mega episode. We had to end it off right for, for this marathon month. How do people get my book? I would be remiss, 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 I tell you, if I didn't talk about this. How the heck do I get the book in people's hands? 
there's three ways that you can get your book independently published into people's hands. Number one is from you. I have a website at damonbrown.net. In fact, let me go ahead and we're going to do it live. Damonbrown.net. And it should show up in a second. There we go. And I'll show you all literally what it looks like. There we go. Dan Brown, consultant, speaking, speaker and author. You see my big head there. All right. Pre-order a new book, The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection. Pre-order now, which links to Amazon, bookshop.org, et cetera, and get signed copies below. So let's go below. Sorry for making you guys dizzy, but I want to be <laughs> thoughtful about the time. See my coaching practice, and boom, there it is. So if you want a signed copy, this is not a plug. I'm just trying to show you all what it is. If you want a signed copy of this book that I got in my hand, The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection, I actually have already pre-ordered copies, have them here in my magical office. And then you can go ahead and, and there's Stephen Pressfield. Again, love you, Stephen. And then it ships in October next month. You can buy the copies from me, get them signed. I'll ship them to you. I buy those copies. I buy, <clears throat> excuse me, I buy those copies from Ingram Spark or whatever I get the printing from. They're like, oh, okay, Damon, your copy, if you want to buy a printed copy from us, Maybe it'll cost $5, maybe it'll cost $10, depending on the quality of the book and how long the book is and all that. My cover price for the book is $40 because it's a compilation of all the books I've done, almost all the books I've done over the past seven years. So $40 is fair. It's a big compilation. It's like 70,000 words or something. Speaking of words, it might be more than that, more like 90. My own point is that that gap, because I had the book printed, and I'm selling a book myself, ends up being the profit. So if you buy the book from me, I sign it, even with shipping and handling, ends up being a lot more profitable for me. So that's one option. Even when I do um, keynotes and things like that, people, they call it back of the back of the room sales because the books are usually in the back of the room, virtually or otherwise. Someone buys a copy after I do the Q&A, after my speaking engagement, they give me the money, I give them the book, I pay the, the printer for the book, then I get paid when I sell the book to whoever whoever the person is, the, the person who's buying the book. That's how it works. So the first option is we call it hand-to-hand. -hand. Here you go. Take my book. Yeah, realize how giant it was. Here it is. Take my book. Here you go. You can take it. Thank you. Right? So from you. The second option, <coughs> excuse me, the second option is from a bookstore, as in a physical bookstore. And believe it or not, we're not just casinos. Vegas actually has a lot of bookstores. And so you go to a Barnes & Noble or even to the, some of the smaller bookstores or cafes around here, and the book is there. Again, Ingram can help with that distribution, so check them out. That's why I talk about them so highly. So the first option is from you, hand-to-hand. -hand. The second option is from a bookstore. And the third option, as you can probably guess, is online. That's when you have the bookshop.orgs. That's when you have the Amazons and so forth. So there are three ways people can get your books. As you go through each way, you're actually making less and less money. So if I'm physically giving you a copy of the book and I got it straight from the printer, then I'm making a, a decent profit. If it's going through a bookstore, the bookstore needs to make their money. And usually your profit, even as an independent um, author, will be less than 50%. If you're doing it, that original way, as far as a hand-to-hand, -hand, you can get more than 50% depending on the setup. And lastly, with Amazon, Amazon and uh, bookshop.org and a lot of those online um, distributors and retailers take a, a, a pretty big chunk. And so your piece might be 10% or 20%, depending on how you have it set up and the platform. Those are the three ways you can do that. When it comes to you actually connecting with people, one thing that's I'd be again remiss to not talk about is that getting press, getting attention for your book. You know, as a journalist and also as a as you know doing the rounds as a public speaker and getting getting interviewed quite a bit, I've seen it from both sides. I've been a professional on both sides. Press is only going to get you so far. So you don't have to worry about getting a write-up in the New York Times or the New Yorker or the Los Angeles Times and all that. Most of my books have not gotten those kind of, kind of write-ups. But if you're able to connect with a community that needs to hear it the most, that's what matters. 
when I've had a column with Ink Magazine, that's been such a wonderful platform. I appreciate Ink Magazine for all they've done for my and supporting me. That's worked out really well because my books are about entrepreneurship and business and burnout, burnout and trying to find balance. And it works with Ink Magazine. So it's not a matter of trying to get press from everybody. It's trying to tr- matter of getting the right press. And then that allows you to connect with the right people. This episode is one of my favorites when it comes to just uh, uh, demystifying a myth. Again, I've been on both sides as a journalist and as someone's been interviewed a lot. Sale, you know, the press will only help you so much. So stop worrying about chasing press and getting, getting the ink, as they used to say. Worry more about connecting with the audience that's supposed to be having your book. Listen, we've covered a ton today. It's one of my longest lives that I've done in a while. I hope it helps you get to the next level. And I look forward to seeing your book someday, whether you do it um, through a traditional publisher. That might take a little while, but you know it's definitely a great journey. Whether you work with a hybrid like Greenleaf, again, the links are below. Shout out to Tanya and other folks over there. Or if you go more my route, you go independent, and you lean on an Ingram Spark, and you go and you get a... Um, a good cover designer and a good editor to help you get to the next level. One bonus suggestion, which I forgot to mention in all the discussion is big magic. It talks about creativity. It talks about getting butt and seat. It's a nice complimentary. If you're paying attention, you know what I'm talking about. Complimentary book along with the war of art. Shout out to Elizabeth Gilbert. One of my favorite authors just based on this book alone. If you feel like you need to get inspiration, as you try to figure out what your book is going to be, this is also a great place to start. Listen, this is the last live show of September 2023. I am so excited. I'm so excited. I'm hitting the wrong links. I'm so excited to have this, I think, 20 episode or so run with y'all. It's been a mess. It's been funny. It's been great. I've been in a robe. I've been lighting candles. I've been pouring coffee. I've been having tech issues. I've had my kids in the background. It's been so much fun stuff when you decide to commit to showing up every single day for your community. However you can do it, I recommend you do the same But because it's so much of a gift for me, way more perhaps than it is a gift for you. We're going to be back to our regularly scheduled programming from here on out, Wednesdays and Sundays at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free. If you're on Amazon, feel free to hit the, the follow link on there. But remember, if you're on Amazon, you're just going to be catching the Wednesday live shows. If you want all the shows, be sure to come over to bringyourworth.tv and subscribe on there. Anyway, much love. I will see you all on the next live next week. Until next time, remember you can always bring your worth and you can always build from now. Take care of yourselves.